Three months ago, I finally pulled the trigger and bought a brand new 2021 Tesla Model 3 Performance, but before that, I spent six months researching. The goal today is to give you a ton of the more obscure things I learned in one video. We have a ton to get through, we're moving rapid fire, let's go. I've got four categories for you with timestamps to follow along. We're looking first at some of the vital considerations before purchasing, tips when purchasing once you've decided to, important accessories, and last, fun surprises I didn't expect. You'll see both positives and negatives along the way, so stay with me. First, considerations in choosing to purchase. This isn't everything, but these were impactful in my decision making. Number one, how often and far do you travel? This will dictate a lot for you. If you're consistently driving one to two hours away round trip for work or for pleasure, the requirement to charge frequently could cause inconveniences, not likely because of a lack of charging availability, but because of lifestyle change to accommodate it. This question also dictates which vehicle option makes the most sense for you and if upgrading to long range or performance will be needed to avoid midday charging if you can charge at home. Also, make sure you look at a supercharger map to understand if there are chargers near to you and how near to you they are. Is the nearest 15 minutes away? Will you realistically make that drive every week plus sit and charge for 45 minutes? This leads to the second question. Number two, do you own a garage? If you do, the convenience of charging goes up substantially. Numerous people without garages have called out the not so inconsequential burden of relying on superchargers. It is a scheduling adjustment for sure. With a garage, it makes owning a Tesla far more viable and less inconvenient. You'll want the Tesla wall connector or at least a NEMA 1450 outlet, allowing you to be fully charged every morning with charge speeds that allow for a full charge through a normal seven, eight hour sleep night. You can only pull 40 amps versus the 48 amps with the wall connector, but this is sufficient for most people. It can provide a full charge overnight and actually provides some flexibility to use that 1450 outlet for other charging purposes like powering an RV or an appliance if that's something that's important to you. If you have a garage or a complex with free charging, great. If you don't, be aware of the new habits you'll have to form around making time to go charge. Number three, can you afford it? While there are indeed cost savings associated with maintenance and gas versus electricity, you may have some reasonably large upfront costs that you probably shouldn't neglect. The wall connector is $500 plus install, which for me was about $400. You can use a standard outlet, but you only get about two to 3% of recovered charge per hour. It's not overly sustainable unless you barely even drive. You can definitely go with a NEMA 1450 outlet instead, which costs like 10 bucks plus the install. It's not as sexy, but definitely cost effective. Another cost, you might want the garage door opener module. $325 extra, I haven't bought it yet, might in the future. Winter mats, a handful of other accessories. All in all, you could spend anywhere from a few hundred dollars up to many thousands based on the next question. Number four, what climate do you live in? Do you live in an area where winters get incredibly cold? You'll need to take into consideration battery charge retention in the winter. You can lose range up to about 30 to 40% even, depending on the severity of the cold. That's a really notable drop off. Also, potholes and terrible roads in cold conditions are a major issue for the 20 inch wheels on the performance model, which is the only size you can get with the performance model. That reduction in rubber with larger wheels will lead to a higher rate of flats and damaged wheels. And because of this, you're likely gonna need winter tires, which can range widely from 1,200 up to $6,000. But you'll need to make sure that they're compatible with the brake calipers. The Model 3 Performance has a narrow range of compatibilities due to their size. I'll talk about what I bought later. Other questions here you should probably ask, if you're changing the wheels, can you change them yourself? Do you have room to store another set of wheels? I answered yes to both, so winter isn't as much an issue for me, but these could drive additional costs for both the storage and the labor. And number five, is performance or economics more important to you? For me, the fun of the car comes from a balance of cost, speed, and range. The additional range on the Model 3 long range was nowhere near enough to make it really appealing for me at the end of the day. The added cost though for the 26% boost in speed for the performance model, that was way more appealing and personally, in my opinion, it's the absolute best cost versus speed deal that Tesla offers right now. Lose only 19 miles of range, but shave off 1.1 seconds in the zero to 60 time, getting down to 3.1 seconds, that's a home run in my opinion. As for economics, the long range model comes stock with 19 inch wheels, so no need for a second set if you're in the winter, which is certainly a more economical option if a zero to 60 time of 4.2 seconds is enough for you. Those are my five considerations. It's not all inclusive, but those were big ones for me. We can all come to different conclusions on them, that's okay. If you've made it through all of those and still wanna move forward, here are five crucial tips 
when making your purchase. Number one, do not forget about EV credits. Your state may offer substantial credit at the time of purchase as well as over the life of the vehicle through other incentives, including tax credits for home charging. Make sure you check out pluginamerica.org to check your state before purchasing. As a note too, Tesla is not currently qualifying for the federal EV tax incentive, kind of a bummer, but you'll kick yourself if you could have saved thousands up front and missed out simply because you didn't check. Number two, kind of an odd one, if you want your vehicle quickly and can afford it, choose a less popular model. More expensive builds are coming a little bit quicker right now. I chose a red Model 3 Performance knowing just anecdotally, I hadn't really seen that many of them on the road. Red costs more, performance costs more, this panned out. While other models literally were taking months to arrive, this build only took weeks. Supply and demand, they are what they are. Number three, do not buy the full self-driving capability up front. Most people do not need it. The stock self-driving features are remarkable and give you 90% of the benefit without the huge upcharge. I don't need summoning. I don't need auto lane changing. What you do get is all of the lane keeping with a requirement to keep your hands on the wheel. Seems pretty reasonable, certainly safe. Also, you could pay $10,000 up front or $200 a month cancelable at any time if you simply subscribe after you purchase. Maybe you're going on a long road trip and want all those added features, just pay $200 for that month and then choose to cancel it later. Also, when you sell your car someday, that $10,000 purchase stays with the vehicle and it really is not proving to do anything for the resale value. It's, it's a waste of money at this point in time. The subscription can come with you to your new Tesla if you buy another one. So there's literally no financial reason to buy this at the time of purchase, save the money. Number four, consider buying the black seats. Yes, the white seats are awesome, they look really great, but the white seats get really dirty. There's just no way around it. They look pretty bad after wearing jeans and sitting on them for a few months. The videos that people are posting of them cleaning these seats, they're honestly kind of brutal. Because of that, I went black seats, they look flawless, I've never had to deal with that. If you're okay with cleaning the seats and want white, go for it. But that's my warning to you, do what you like to do. Number five, inspect your car thoroughly when it arrives. Tesla has historically had some quality issues. While many of those have been resolved, look it over and do not sign for it until you verify it all looks perfect. They will fix it much faster if you don't end up in the service queue after you've accepted it. They're incentivized to fix it quickly if you won't sign for it. Here's what to look for. First, panel gaps. Make sure there are no large gaps around panels and doors. Compare both sides of the car to ensure that it all looks the same. Mine had no issues here, but other people have glass chips, and cracks. Give them at least a once over and look for issues that could have arisen during shipping. Rocks are really a pain. Paint quality. The one defect my car had was what the agent called a snowball. I don't see anyone else calling it that. That's what he called it. Essentially, there was a spot on the paint where it had not been fully polished and looked almost a little bit opaque in the right lighting. They caught it, brought it in the shop for three minutes, buffed it out, and it looked perfect. But make sure you look at your vehicle in proper sunlight. Get down low, look at the reflections of the paint all around the car, and make sure it looks flawless. Steering wheel, turn the vehicle on and turn the steering wheel to make sure it doesn't squeak. If it does, some wires might just be rubbing internally and can be easily fixed by the team on site. And last, the wheels. Make sure they aren't chipped or nicked in any way and look perfect. If all that looks good, you should be all right. Go ahead and sign for it. Those are my five tips. This video today is not sponsored, so if you've enjoyed it so far and wanna help me feed my family and make a career doing what I love, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. It is seriously the best payment I could ask for. Now, back to the video. Let's talk 10 accessories you should consider. Any personal links are commission links for products that were not sent to me. I found them on my own and I paid for them. Use my links in the description. It helps me out a ton. Number one, wheels. If you go with the Performance Model 3 and need a set of winter wheels, if you just want to stand out or if you want to gain a little bit more in the zero to 60 time, a set of wheels is the way to go. I realized quickly that the Tesla Model 3 Performance brake calipers were going to disqualify most wheels. And thus, I spent a lot of time searching and researching to find compatible wheels. I landed on Martian wheels for a few reasons. One, they're fully compatible and designed specifically for Tesla. Two, their brand new forged MW05 19 inch wheels are lighter at roughly 22 pounds versus 32 pounds of the stock 20 inch Uber turbine. They're also 1.3 times stronger. In my test, that got me an additional 10th of a second in zero to 60 time. Where I averaged about 3.4 seconds in current conditions here in Indiana, I was able to reduce that to an average of about 3.3 seconds under ideal conditions. Keep in mind, Tesla wheels are designed to have an insanely low coefficient of drag, so you will likely lose some energy efficiency when moving away from Tesla wheels. Well, it's raining. 
You might hear some rain in the background. All that said, Martian offers wheels and tire packages to prevent you from having to purchase tires separately. They seamlessly connect with tire pressure monitoring. They're shipped to your house with the tires on and at a correct tire pressure. All you have to do is throw them on your vehicle. Insanely convenient. Definitely a premium product at a premium price. Tire Rack also offers some lower cost options, but you're really going to want to verify actual compatibility if you go with the Model 3 Performance. Number two, floor mats. You gotta have them. The provided mats are not great. Here's the thing, finding mats that fit can really be rough, and here's why. Tesla doesn't operate like normal companies. There are multiple models of the Tesla Model 3, even within 2021, with only small differences. After a ton of research, I went with Tesmanian's full set of mats, which includes rear seats, the frunk, the trunk, and the lower trunk storage in the trunk. Make sure you specify with them that you want the late 2021 Tesla Model 3 mats or the passenger mats, they're not gonna fit properly. I had to go through a few renditions with them to get this right. This is a problem with tons of aftermarket mats and if you read reviews, you'll see this all over the place. Testmanian has a great solution. Make sure you request the proper mats. My personal link is in the description. Number three, drawer inserts. Tesla kinda thought through their drawers, but they're made a ton better with some storage inserts. The ones I found, they fit flawlessly, and in the front compartment, it slides beautifully as if it was truly a stock Tesla part. Also, buy the storage insert for the inside of the door to the center console. I always keep my wallet here. Please don't rob me. It's out of sight, not a common place to check for it, and it fits perfectly. With the advent of digital wallets and my phone becoming my car key, I find myself leaving my wallet here like 95% of the time now. This insert fits perfectly, the adhesives hold it tight, it's a must have to utilize what's truly just unused space. Number four, a cup holder insert. Sure, the cup holders, they look fantastic without an insert, but they don't grip cups or bottles at all. I found an insert that fits perfectly and helps dramatically with holding my cups tight. It also doesn't slide out when removing a drink, so that's a plus. It does have a proper orientation though, so make sure you put it in right for proper fit. Number five is the screen protector. Honestly, I'm going to call this one a personal preference. Others would call it mandatory. I just don't like them, flat out. I don't like them on my phone, I don't like them in my car. But they certainly reduce the risk of scratches on the most central component of the vehicle. You can buy one also that reduces glare or one that is just fully transparent. I own a screen protector, I haven't put it on yet. I'm still contemplating. Number six, strong Wi-Fi. Your vehicle is going to need to receive updates. This happens through connecting to Wi-Fi. Tesla is always pushing new features, so you're going to want to connect to Wi-Fi. Whether you have a garage or not, you're really going to want to make sure that you have access to a strong Wi-Fi network. There isn't really one solution here, but Netgear's Orbi is a monster. The Google Nest Mesh Wi-Fi is another strong option. With both, you can actually use their extenders or another mesh point to bring access closer to your vehicle. Definitely consider this when purchasing your vehicle. Gotta connect somehow. Number seven, Xbox controller. Yes, you can play a couple Xbox games as well as others on the Tesla system when parked. Freaking awesome. You need a controller with a cable to connect to the system. It doesn't use Bluetooth. There are two Type-C ports in the latest model of the Tesla Model 3 in the front storage compartment, or you can buy a port hub to give you standard USB ports. I personally just have a bunch of these Type-C cables laying around, so links to the controller and to the hub in the description. Number eight, jack points. Jacking up your Tesla to change a tire can go really badly if you don't know what you're doing. You can severely damage the battery if you place the jack incorrectly. So having a Tesla jack pad will help you with this by providing clearance for the jack and also indicating the proper jack location location near to each tire. It's good to keep just one of them in your car at all times. You don't need four of them, just one will do. Also, hockey puck works just fine as well. That's what I use. I'll link it in the description as well. Number nine, trunk hook. There is a random thread that sticks down from the roof of the trunk. You can buy a small hook to make use of that. It's helpful for groceries and other bags, a small but effective upgrade. Number 10, draggy. This is just a fun toy for a fast car, but if you like measuring your vehicle's performance in the zero to 60 or in a quarter mile, draggy is a tiny device that syncs with your smartphone and measures your vehicle's acceleration via gyro sensors in the device and your position via satellite to give you a highly accurate measurement of your performance. It saves your previous runs with all the stats, has an augmented reality interface for recording your runs, it's pretty stinking sweet. It's a bit pricey, but a fun toy for a car guy and a great Christmas gift as well. All right, if you are still with me, last are the fun surprises I frankly didn't think about when purchasing my Tesla, but are things I have come to seriously love. 
Number one, single pedal driving. No, this does not mean that it only has one pedal, but because of regenerative braking, meaning as you brake, the battery is going to regain some of that charge, you have the ability to set up the car in the hold stopping mode. And when you let off the accelerator, the vehicle will begin to fairly rapidly decelerate until it comes to a complete stop. Also meaning you don't have to ride the brake to remain stopped. You can just hover your foot over the gas. Of course, I'll hit the brake when needing to stop quicker, but I only use the brake about 5% as much as I used to. It's awesome. Number two, standalone LTE network. This was something I truly didn't know about until I bought it. When connecting to Spotify, Hulu, Netflix, the internet, your vehicle comes equipped with its own cellular connectivity. Yes, you can certainly connect your phone to it and pipe in all the audio from your phone, but for the first 12 months after purchasing your vehicle, you get free use of this LTE connection built into your car, and then we'll pay $9.99 a month thereafter. For the ability to stream Spotify and watch TV and movies on my vehicle's display while parked, definitely worth it to me. Easy 10 bucks a month. Number three, mobile key sharing. Through the website, you can use Tesla's mobile app and give key access to your vehicle to up to five other people, all of which can be added or removed at any point in time. On my honeymoon, my dad actually offered to bring my car to the airport, drop it off so we'd have it available for us when our plane landed at like midnight. He downloaded the app, I sent him a key, he brought the car over, dropped it in the garage on a free charger, mind you, and I had my car there the next day. Mobile keys, amazing. Number four, charging port door opening. Tesla has literally thought of everything. Whether using your home charger or a supercharger, when approaching the vehicle, you can press the button on the charging cable and it will communicate with your vehicle to open the charging port. Again, small thing, but a brilliant design and saves the hassle of pressing a button inside the vehicle to open the charging port really well thought out. Number five, electric heating and cooling. It's really cold here in Indiana, really cold. Having an electric heater in my car means I don't have to rely on the engine to heat the interior anymore, AKA, man, this car heats up really fast. And similarly, it cools down super quick. So compared to my Acura head before, the temperature control here is far superior and an unexpected benefit. Number six, voice commands. While it may seem in the beginning like Tesla kind of crippled certain functions by burying them in the interface, remember, try changing it with your voice. Yeah, there is no easy way to turn on the steering wheel heater. It's kind of buried. But with your voice, it's one push away. Try this with the heated seats, the air temperature. Voice commands are integrated incredibly well. Number seven, the speed. Obvious, yes, I know, we all know they're fast, but because there's no gear shifts, the acceleration feels much more like a roller coaster than a vehicle. Insanely fun times if this is your first time ever feeling it. Number eight, Rainbow Road Mode. To activate self-driving, you generally press down twice rapidly on the drive stock. Instead, press it down five times rapidly and enter Rainbow Road Mode. Oh yeah. It'll play some music and show a fun graphic on the screen, and while you won't be given any red shells to fire at obnoxious drivers, still pretty dang entertaining. Number nine, the toy box. At a party and need to play some music? Turn your car into a boom box. Maybe mix a beat while you're waiting. Snuggle up to a fire. Draw a fun picture with your passenger. Turn your map into the surface of Mars, because why not? Spread some Christmas cheer by playing Santa's music for all to hear. Tesla's constantly finding fun ways to keep both you and your kids entertained while driving. I had no idea about this when I bought it. It's pretty stinking cool and actually gets me excited about other weird and quirky things they might add over time. That is it for today, y'all. It is a fire hose, I know, but I don't have enough good things to say about my Tesla. Honestly, I absolutely love it. I hope this video helped you make a decision around whether or not it's right for you. If it did, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment below, please. Hit that subscribe button, it helps me out so much, and I will see you in the next video.